Good morning. If you would, open in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Just a moment, we'll begin in verse number 1. Matthew 25 in verse number 1. I do want to say again, if you ask me a question and all I do is shake or nod, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not supposed to be talking. And so uh, that's the reason that I'm being very quiet. Uh, until we get something worked out, uh, then I'll, I will be preaching, but uh, it will be very short sermons. And I appreciate your prayers. Uh, but again, under the doctor's advice, I'm not supposed to be talking. So uh, we'll just try to wing it and see where we go from there. So in Matthew chapter 25, by the way, for those that are visiting, we are doing a series of uh, sermons based on some of our favorite Bible stories, favorite Bible stories. And uh, this one was asked to, to talk about the parable of the ten virgins, and it's recorded in Matthew chapter 25, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And the Bible says in verse 4, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. Watch therefore, for you know not, uh, know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. It's kind of an unusual parable because it actually goes back to the customs of of marriages in the days when Jesus was on this earth. It's the, the Near Eastern culture for their wedding ceremonies, a little bit different than we do things today. And so it, it takes for us a moment to just zero in and focus, well, what in the world is he talking about? And so in order to stand, understand this parable, you've got to go back and you must think about the context in which this parable was written. And in order to do that, you go back to Matthew chapter 24. And you remember that in Matthew chapter 24, that Jesus was going out of the temple in verse number 1. The disciples show him the glorious buildings of the temple. And he responds to them in verse 2. You see all these things? He says, Verily I say unto you, there shall not be here or left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And so they show him the beauty of the temple. He responds, the temple's going to be destroyed, and they are in shock. It says in verse 3 of Matthew 24 that as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And for us to understand this parable, 
We've got to understand the context. And so they asked Jesus about the destruction of the temple. They asked the question, when is the temple going to be destroyed? And then they asked him, are there signs that we need to be looking for that are going to predict or foretell the destruction of the temple? And then the third and final question is, Jesus, when you return, what's going to transpire? And so beginning in Matthew 24 and verse 4, Jesus answers the first two questions. And in answering those first two questions, he tells them about all these uh, signs that you're to look for that are going to tell you the temple is about to be destroyed. Jerusalem is about to be destroyed. And if you will look for those signs, you'll be ready and prepared when that moment comes. And then beginning in verse 36, Jesus said this, Matthew 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So in answering the first two questions, Jesus told them, look for these signs and you'll be ready for Jerusalem to be destroyed. And in doing that, he tells them that when you see these signs come to pass, you need to get out of Jerusalem. You need to flee and go into the mountains and live there. And so in answering those first two questions, he says, here's the signs, here's what you look for, here's what you do when it happens. But then in answering the third question, Jesus tells them that no man knows the hour in which I'm coming back. He says, as a matter of fact, at this point, I myself do not even know when I'm going to return to this earth. And so Jesus did not, and I want you to listen very carefully, Jesus did not give signs that are going to predate his second coming. The signs that he gave predate the destruction of Jerusalem. And now with hindsight, we know that happened in 70 AD. And so the temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was uh, ransacked. And the Jewish people, they perished in essence from the face of this earth because they were wiped out as a most part. I know there were some that survived, but for the most part, the Jewish people were wiped out. And as a nation, they did not exist until, what, less than 100 years ago? And they were restored by an act. Uh, it wasn't even the UN at that time. It was the, uh, oh, I don't even remember what it's called, League of Nations, I believe. And so they restored this land to those people. But Jesus said, when this happens, get out of the city. So now, verse 36, Jesus is saying, look, there's no signs about when I'm going to return. It will be a complete and utter surprise. And so then Jesus gives three parables. He gives the parable of the watchful servant. That is Matthew 24, beginning in verse 36. Actually, the parable doesn't actually begin until about verse 42. And so he says in verse 42, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. And then he gives this parable that recorded in verse 43. He said, but know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and what would not have suffered or allowed his house to be broken up. Verse 44 Therefore, be ye also ready. So that parable is very clearly a parable about being prepared. You don't know when the thief is coming, so always be prepared. Then in Matthew 25, the verses that we just read, Jesus gives the parable of the ten virgins. And even though the parable is different, the message that Jesus taught 
is exactly the same. Look at verse 13 again of Matthew chapter 25. Watch therefore, for you know not, or, or you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And then Jesus gives what is known as the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, beginning in verse 14 and going through verse 40. And again, we would just reiterate that this parable teaches the exact same lesson that the other two parables taught. Notice that he says in verse number 30 that you are to cast out the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then beginning in verse 31, Jesus tells us what is going to transpire on the great judgment day. And on that great judgment day, everybody will stand before Jesus Christ and they will give an account for what they've done in the body, whether it's good or bad. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, or excuse me, chapter 5 and verse number 10. And so Jesus is telling them, you don't know when I'm coming back. So let's look at the parable very quickly. The parable can be divided into four parts. The first part, as Jesus said, you better be ready. The second part, in that preparation of being ready, you better participate. You must participate. Remember these virgins, they were not ready when the bridegroom came. Why? Well, they all went to sleep and they hadn't made preparation. And so you must participate in this. And then the third point that Jesus is making, don't be excluded. Don't live your life in such a way that on the day of judgment, you're going to be excluded. And then Jesus is going to make a pronouncement. And so let's think about this. As Jesus said in Matthew 25, beginning in verse number one, you need to be ready. Five virgins of these 10 brought extra oil with them. They were prepared. They had foresight. You know, the old adage of the Boy Scouts is to be prepared. You've got to be ready. And so what Jesus is telling us that our preparation means that we are looking toward the future. Do you remember in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus over and over again told us you need to participate and look toward the future. Remember he said, do not lay up treasures for yourself upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. But we need to lay up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. And so these five foolish virgins, they did not look to the future. They did not participate. They were not prepared. They were not ready. But the five wise virgins, and again, this goes back to the, the marriage ceremonies that they had in the first century. And these five foolish, or the five wise virgins, they not only brought their lamps, remember the foolish virgins brought their lamps, but they didn't bring extra oil. And so when their oil ran out of the lamp, they were, that was it. They, they had no other. And so the five wives, they brought extra oil. When their lamps burned all the oil, they had extra. They could pour into it and light. And so what they would do in this marriage, uh, getting ready for the marriage to, to go into the actual <laughs> marriage ceremony, they would precede the bride and the groom and they would have lamps, like lights that they would carry. Five of them were not ready, five of them were. And so it says in verse five that while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And so think about this. Jesus is giving us just a little bit of a hint, and I hope we get this, that his coming 
was not going to be immediate. How many times have you heard people say, well, the Christians in the first century, they thought Jesus was going to come back in their lifetime. And there was a misunderstanding among some who believed that. But Paul would write to the brethren in Thessalonica, there had to be a great falling away before I'm going to come back. And so even in this parable, the bridegroom in verse 5 did not come immediately. He tarried. And so then when he did finally arrive, everybody gets up and they start the procession but the five foolish virgins had no oil. They had no preparation. And so they were not a part. And so the question that we would, or the thought that we would bring from this, brethren, it's foolish for us not to prepare for eternity. Not just for the future that we have here on this earth, but we've got to be prepared for eternity. Because in reality, eternity is what is important. What we have here on this earth is temporal. It's going to pass away, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But what is eternal, that's what we need to be making preparation for. And so we would ask the question, are you ready for that day to come? Another thing we learn from this parable is there is no repentance after death. Notice that when the bridegroom arrived, and the foolish virgins had no oil. Then those that had oil couldn't share their oil with them because then they wouldn't have enough. And so when you look at this, they were cast out. And notice that they said in verse number 11, Lord, Lord, open to us. Now, did they have the right to ask that question? Well, sure, they had that right. They were a part of the procession. They had been invited to be a part of it, but they were unprepared. And you think about this. Those that would say that once saved, always saved is a true statement. Well, look at this. This tells us that's not true. They were invited. They were in the parade and ready to go, but they were not prepared. And then when the bridegroom actually comes, he says, look, I never knew you. I know you're not. And so there is no repentance after death. This idea that some have taught there's a purgatory and you go to purgatory and while you're in purgatory, you know, people can, and actually this is what they do and people don't like to hear it, you can bribe the so-called clergy, and uh, they can pay enough money and pray enough prayers to get you out of purgatory. Well, that's not in the Bible. That's not what Jesus taught. Jesus said, I don't know you. And so be ready. Brethren, we're also called to participate. In verse number 10, while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And notice this, and the door was shut. Someone has said the door was shut to be opened never again. When those foolish virgins knock on the door, let us in. No, sir, the door is shut. There is no one going to open the door after the day of judgment. Again, that tells us. There's no repentance after death. And brethren, to participate is really simple. That's what God calls us to do. In whatever area we function, we are to participate. Not only that, this parable tells us those who prepare will go to heaven. It also tells us those who do not prepare will not go to heaven. And then the encouragement is don't be excluded. You know, when you look at this, these five virgins were lost because they were unprepared. And it really is sad when you think about it because it didn't have to happen. The five wise virgins, they made preparation. They bought extra oil. They knew what to do. 
Why did the foolish virgins not do that? Well, there might be a myriad of reasons. They may have been lazy. I don't know what, what the background of those girls were, but we know this. Whatever happened, they were not prepared. And that is sad when you think about it because it did not need to happen. And brethren, on the day of judgment, when we all stand before Jesus Christ and he says to some, depart, I never knew you. That's going to be a sad day. And why is it going to be sad? Because it doesn't have to happen. Not only that, brethren, being unprepared is clearly inexcusable. The, par the parable of the great supper feast, you remember in that parable that all the ones that had been invited came up with excuses and said, oh, I've got this happening now. I bought some land. I've got to go look at it. I bought a team of oxen. I got to go test them. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm married. I've got to go. You know, I'm, I got to go. So, and you think about this parable, and the point that Jesus made in the parable was look, go out into the highways and the byways, call all these people in. And then he provided the clothes for them to wear. And there was one man, do you remember this, who didn't have on the proper attire. And when the king saw it, he was furious. Why? You've been given everything you need. All you've got to do is put it on. And he, this rascal was so lazy, he wouldn't even put it on. Or maybe not lazy, maybe just rebellious. Well, I don't have to wear those clothes. I don't have to do that in order to go to heaven. You think about how many people say that. Well, I don't have to, I don't have to be baptized to go to heaven. I don't have to attend the services of the saints to go to heaven all those excuses that are made and God has done everything for us there is no excuse and then of course Jesus makes the pronouncement in verse 13 listen carefully the parable is summed up watch watch that's what he's saying we would say it like this be vigilant Aware of what's going on around you and be watchful and be ready. Notice Jesus said, For ye know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You know, it really is that simple. And this parable is a powerful parable in many ways because there's no way to get around it. It's simple, it's straightforward, and it means exactly what it says. And so the lesson this morning, are you ready? Are you ready for the Lord to come? If you've never obeyed the gospel, you know that you hear the word of God, believe that word, repent of the sins you have in your life, confess that Jesus is the Christ, and be baptized. And if you've never done that, Brother Britt, has uh, an invitation for a song for us to sing, and we're, we're pleading with you to respond so that you can be ready when our Lord comes Amen. as one of God's children. Don't be like these five foolish virgins. You've been invited. You've been participating. So make the proper preparation. And if you haven't done that, and you need prayers, encouragement, if we can help, please come as we stand and as we sing.